Hello, everyone. Welcome to this psychology course. We will continue with chapter 4, Perception and Sensation. In this chapter, we will first look into perceptual process. Then we will talk about vision, hearing, and the other sensations. Let's start with the perceptual process. There are so many things happening around us. However, we perceive only a small part of it. Even this perception does not just happen. There are many processes involved. These sequences of steps are called perceptual processes. It is a process about how we experience and react to the stimuli in the environment. Stimulus exists both in the environment and within our body. Stimulus in the environment has two aspects, environmental stimulus and attended stimulus. Imagine that you're walking in a park and a distinctive leaf captures your attention. This is an environmental stimulus. Then you realize that this thing is not a leaf, it's a leaf-shaped bug. Thus, you focus on the bug. The bug becomes the center of your attention. In other words, it becomes the attended stimulus. Perception occurs when the electric signals of the leaf-shaped bug representation reach the brain in a transformed form. Realization of the leaf-shaped bug is called recognition. Walking toward it to see it clearly is an action. Recognition and action are the outcomes of the perceptual process. Sensation includes the information contained in the environmental stimuli that are captured by the relevant sensory system and transmitted to the brain. Perception, on the other hand, is the process of analyzing, recognizing, interpreting, and organizing this information. Now let's continue with vision. Of all the human senses, there is no doubt that hearing and vision are the most significant ones. People are visual beings who constantly use their eyes to gather information and make decisions about their surroundings. We use vision to perceive the environment in various ways with our eyes as other primates. The light, which is a form of electromagnetic energy, affects the photoreceptors of the retina. The pupil regulates the amount of light according to its brightness. You can think of your eye as a camera. Light enters the eye through its pupil, focuses on the cornea and lenses, and then reaches the rods and cones, the receptor cells on the retina. We can distinguish objects from each other and from the background through our color perception. This is very important for the survival of the species. There are two main theories of color perception. These are the trichromatic theory and the opponent process theory. Distance perception is the act of knowing or recognizing a distance by previous experiences or recollective thought. Depth and distance perception refer to the ability to recognize objects by positioning them in variable distances in the three-dimensional world. Perceptual organization involves the grouping of elements in an image to create larger objects. In the early 1900s, a group of psychologists called themselves Gestalt psychologists. They proposed the idea that the whole differs from the sum of its parts. Gestalt psychologists argue that if the relationships between the objects around us are uncertain, the simplest and the most consistent arrangements are made to provide a perceptual organization. Now we can move on to hearing. The ear is the organ of the auditory system. We know that we hear with our ears, and what we hear is called a sound. So, can you tell what a sound is? There are two definitions of sound physical and perceptual. The physical definition of sound refers to the pressure change in the air, whereas the perceptual definition refers to the experience that we have during hearing. Human ear consists of three parts, inner, outer, and middle ear. Sound travels at a constant speed in the air. A sound wave is defined by three components, frequency, amplitude, and phase. The frequency of the wave that forms the sound determines the pitch of the sound. High frequency sound wave is perceived as high pitch. Low frequency sound wave is perceived as low pitch. The pitch is important because it plays an important role in distinguishing people's voices and their emotions during speech. 
most of the mammals have two ears that provide information about the location of sound, like the monocular and binocular cues that provide information about depth, the auditory system uses both one-eared and two-eared cues to localize sound. Each ear interacts with the incoming sound waves differently depending on the sound source. Let's talk about the other sensations that we have. As we all know, other than vision and hearing, we also have senses of smell, taste, and touch. The sense of smell is important for most species because it is often the primary source of perceiving the environment. Animals which have a highly developed sense of smell are macrosomatic. The sense of smell is not that crucial to our survival, so humans are microsomatic. The most basic function of the sense of smell in vertebrate animals is to catch the chemical stimuli in the air. The smell is closely linked to the memory. Even some forgotten events or memories can be remembered with the help of smells that are associated with these memories. Now we move on to taste, which detects molecules that enter the mouth in solid or liquid form. In general, the taste sensation has the following categories. Sweetness, sourness, saltiness, and bitterness. Taste has a complex structure beyond the recognition of flavors. When the taste of food is imagined, appetite swells. On the other hand, taste ensures that we stay away from toxic and harmful things. The surface of the tongue contains many ridges and valleys caused by the presence of structures that are called papillae. The signals formed in the receptors are sent to the brainstem and then to the cerebral cortex via the taste signal. Touch has a survival value for human beings in many ways, including escaping dangerous situations such as extreme temperature. Humans are sensitive to mostly four tactile sensations pressure, pain, warmth, and cold. These sensations are conveyed through receptors on the skin and in our internal organs. The skin prevents dangerous stimuli from entering the body. It also has other functions, such as regulating the body temperature. There are various types of receptors on the surface of the skin. These skin receptors respond to environmental stimuli. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 4 of the Psychology course. Goodbye, and see you in our next program, Chapter 5.